Hi guys, I'm in a clinic today so I can do a bit of a bloggy video on getting your patient ready for surgery. So I'm just going to go over the basics of attaching your patient to the sensors and the monitors. This obviously is a plush toy that I'm using here just because this is going to be the easiest for me to show you guys. I don't actually have any of these connected to an ECG machine as such, so it's just the sensors to start off with. First one, as soon as you say your patient is intubated, we've got a tube in here. I'm going to turn on the oxygen and I'm going to attach my tube in here. This patient is tiny, so I would just want like a tiny tea piece. Breathing set. So say this is attached, I've got a small half a litre bag on here. This was the one that I was going to use. But definitely do your measurements for your bags first before assuming. So this is all connected. I've got oxygen running in. I'm going to, before I attach this, I want to attach my respiratory monitor. So this one is just like a little handheld. It's got a battery in it. You can attach it and keep it for all your kind of anesthetic monitoring um, anesthetic machines without the clinic. I think these are really, really useful. So all you do is turn this little button on here, attach this end to the patient, and this end to your breathing tube. This, every time a breath is made, will beep. If there is a lack of breathing, the patient has stopped breathing and it hasn't, hasn't detected any breaths for a long time, it will alert. This will probably go off in a minute and you can get the example. So, say so that is all connected, make sure that your tube cuff is done up. Now, I want to, there we go. That gives you an example, so that's going up. So I'm just gonna press that button to stop that one. I haven't checked my patient yet, so I would, in this instance, I would be checking heart rate with a stethoscope, doing a manual check at this stage, and then moving on to attaching a sensor. Next one I'm going to attach is my SpO2. So I just want to get a rough SpO2, making sure that that tube is in nicely and that we've got a nice oxygen level going on there, and pulse rate. So I would turn this one on, and I would attach this. When we're in a sternal recumbency like this, the tongue is easy to access, so I would always go to the tongue first. So I don't want to exit. imagine that's the tongue. So that's attached on there. Next thing that I'm going to place is my ECG cords. Now, ECG cords can definitely get very kind of confusing. There's so many of them. Where do you put them? Depending on the machine that you're using, sometimes you only have to attach three, which will be the front, the left and the right foreleg, and then the left hind leg just at that little indent. You can attach the three, make sure the setting is chosen on your machine to use only three, but I guess be best practice is always to have the five cords on, but if it is interfering with your vet's kind of surgical site, you can opt for the three. I always find that I get a more consistent reading if I've got the three and it doesn't kind of interfere when the vet is kind of leaning on them or anything like that, I get more interruptions than anything. Um, I'm just going to ignore the colours for now because all, lots of machines are different. So make sure that you've got up on the wall what each colour and where they go because some of them do vary. So I'm just not going to worry about it at the moment. But for this one, the main thing with attaching them is just making sure that you're around the four quadrants of the heart. So right up in the underarm. It's not going to attach to my plush toy, is it? <laughs> right up in here. Making sure that these sensors are connected to your clips well, because I've seen sometimes they are slip off a little bit, and that's not going to give you a good reading either. In the description below, I'll put a bit of a code in relation to which colour goes where. But for, for now, just ignore these colours. And then with the centre one, you want it right over the sternum there. That's the one that I find that does interrupt quite a lot. So often you'd only have to have these three, but for now I'm just going to have all five on there just because it is a, an example for you guys. I've also seen clinics with the ECG cords, you can put little labels, like with a label maker, little tabs which say LL, right L, center, just making it so much easier for you. Next thing that I'm going to attach is my blood pressure monitor. My favorite location for blood pressure is always on the tail. If the patient has a tail, I just find that it's the most consistent kind of 
shaped area and it always get a really good reading. It's always the tail base, right, just kind of just where the tail starts. But for this one, this dog does not have a tail, so I'm going to use the leg. I'm going to use this leg here, actually. So I want my cord going away from the patient. I've kind of semi-measured this. I could probably have gone up a size with this one, and I definitely should have. Actually, I'm going to go up the next size for that one. So that was a size 2, and I'm going to go up to a size 3. Even if he may have fit in that one, once I press, you know, start to measure, it's going to blow up and it's going to pop off that leg. I can see it happening. So we're going to wrap around. I've done another video actually on how to measure up for blood pressure. So if you still need help help with blood pressure cuffs, make sure you go and watch that video. Okay, so that's nice and snug on there. It's not too tight and it's not too loose. I would then attach this to my blood pressure monitoring and I would press start. Next component that I would attach here would be fluids. If your clinic does intra-op fluid, which I think is really important, intra-op fluids maintains blood pressure which is really important and it does increase their recovery time so they go under anesthetic their blood pressure kind of drops their body temperature drops and it takes a long time for everything to kind of get up and moving again so keeping fluids going is really really important the other thing in regards to temperature is i would attach a thermometer probe either an esophageal thermometer probe or a rectal probe thermometer probe depending on what your clinic has um, I would also make sure that you've got a heat mat or you've got some kind of warming device like a bear hugger going on here making sure that that patient is keeping nice and warm that's the basics for kind of getting your patient attached and the order that I would do them in Crazy.